Hello, my name is Sarah Lewis, and this is my video explication over the poem What the Living Do by Marie Howe. This poem deals in themes of death, monotony, and learning how to live for oneself rather than for another. It brings up feelings of loneliness and despair, as well as hope and yearning. It's a wonderful poem that can be very relatable to a common population. Before we delve into breaking down the poem, I would like to read through it in its entirety. What the Living Do by Marie Howe. Johnny, the kitchen sink has been clogged for days. Some utensil probably fell down there. And the drain won't work, but smells dangerous. And the crusty dishes have piled up, waiting for the plumber I still haven't called. This is the everyday we spoke of. It's winter again. The sky's a deep headstrong blue and the sunlight pours through the open living room windows because the heat's on too high in here and I can't turn it off. For weeks now, driving or dropping a bag of groceries in the street, the bag breaking, I've been thinking, this is what the living do. And yesterday, hurrying along those wobbly bricks in the Cambridge sidewalk, spilling my coffee down my wrist and sleeve, I thought it again. It again later when buying a hairbrush. This is it, parking, slamming the door shut in the cold, what you called that yearning, what you finally gave up. We want the spring to come and the winter to pass. We want whoever to call or not call, a letter, a kiss. We want more and more and then more of it. But there are moments, walking, when I catch a glimpse of myself in the window glass, say the window of the corner video store, and I'm gripped by a cherishing so deep from my own blowing hair, chapped face, and unbuttoned coat, that I'm speechless. I'm living. I remember you. So what is this poem about? I will be discussing the common themes used throughout the poem, as well as the issues that are addressed within the piece. Overall, the poem seems to be about someone who has lost a loved one. I can only assume it was a husband or a lover of some sort by the way that the poet describes their relationship. It seems that this lover must have passed away recently, and the speaker is trying to manage getting through everyday life without this person by their side. The quote, waiting for the plumber, I still haven't called. This is the everyday we spoke of. On line four supports this statement, as well as the quote, the heat's on too high in here and I can't turn it off on line six through seven. Johnny, the loved one the speaker has lost, may have been the only one who knew how to turn off the heat or fix the sink. And now the speaker has to learn how to do these things by themselves. Another thing we can gather from the poem is that the speaker did not care much for the monotony of everyday life, whereas Johnny did. In the quote, for weeks now, driving or dropping a bag of groceries in the street, the bag breaking, I've been thinking, this is what the living do. On lines eight through nine, there seems to be a sadness within the speaker, like they're bored of this life and that they're living on their own now. The poet goes on to add what you called that yearning in line 12, as if Johnny yearned for this simple monotonous life. The speaker settled for the suburban dream only to be left behind. At the end of the poem, however, the poet is caught in a moment in front of a shop window and feels that same yearning that Johnny had felt. The speaker is living for themselves now. These are all very relatable themes addressed in this piece. Oh, sorry. All seem to tackle the crux of humanity. Will we ever be happy? On line 14, the poet says, we want more and more and then more of it. This is human nature in its basest form. We're constantly striving for bigger and better constantly wanting more. The poet had this beautiful suburban life, but it still wasn't enough. So what literary elements are prominent in this piece? There are many different elements used in this poem, the most prominent being enjambment, seishura, and metaphors. Lines nine through 12 read, and yesterday hurrying along those wobbly bricks in the Cambridge sidewalk, spilling my coffee down my wrist and sleeve, I thought it again. And again later when buying a hairbrush. This is it, parking, slamming the car door shut in the cold. Both of these quotes are riddled with the use of Seishura to symbolize the constant stopping and starting of life. The sentences and errands are stopped short with a period as a way of emphasizing how little meaning these tasks have. It relates back to the themes of going through the motions and the monotony of life. There's also the use of enjambment in the line, what you called that yearning, what you finally gave up on lines 12 through 13. Not only does this highlight the word yearning, 
which both the speaker and Johnny experienced throughout this piece, but it also separates that line, what you finally gave up. The way that this line is worded and emphasized on its own makes me think that perhaps Johnny was on a deathbed, that he was sick and holding on, but eventually gave up, and that this is why the speaker is so lost in this life on their own. Not only are they lonely, they're angry that they've been left behind. The line, we want spring to come and winter to pass on line 13 can be seen as a metaphor for Johnny's sickness. The speaker was desperate for this sickness to pass and for their life to continue on together, but spring never came and now it's winter again. So how does this all fit together? The base storyline and the literary elements, how do they form an all around message? The last line of the poem holds an optimism and acceptance that ties all of these elements together. I am living. I remember you. The poet learns to live for themselves rather than just going through the motions as someone who has lost another. However, they also don't have to sacrifice their love or memories of their lost loved one to move forward. They accept that their life with Johnny is gone and can begin again with the new cherishing of their life. This poem is an absolutely beautiful representation of moving on with your life after being struck down by grief. It shows the speaker's journey from feeling hopeless and lost to having an entirely new appreciation for life. Thank you so much for watching my video explication over the poem, What the Living Do by Marie Howe.